My name is Devin Haskins, and this is the Run For Your Life podcast. Welcome back to the show, everyone. Let's get into the subject matter. I ran my first marathon in 2006. I am old. (laughs) By far, it was one of my most memorable experiences of my life. Uh, It was one of my bucket list accomplishments. I think I rank that as one of my best uh, marathons that I've run. The wild thing about it, uh, I loosely train for it. Typically, I train between five to six months for a marathon. I think I trained for maybe two or three months tops. Um, Honestly, I wasn't prepared for it, and I felt it as we will get into shortly. The marathon was the Richmond Marathon. For those not familiar with the race, it's relatively hilly. In particular, miles 10 through 18 is very, very hilly. At the start of the marathon, I can remember uh, going out. I felt good. You know, again, I was hyped. So I went out with the 730 pace group. Uh, I lasted with them for about seven miles. Then I dropped back to the 745 pace group. Uh, I lasted with them for a few miles. Then I dropped back to the eight minute mile pace group. And I lasted with that eight minute pace group uh, until about mile 14 or 15. And that's when I started to feel that little familiar tingle in one of my legs. And I know most of you guys know what I'm talking about. It's like somebody's taking a string and and pulling it across your your leg and it's it's tickling. And I know you guys know what that is. It was a cramp. Um, I tried to throw back some goos. Uh, I drunk Gatorade, ate pretzels. But you guys know by the time you start feeling that, it's it's, it's a little bit too late. You you have to have that in you and um, before You start feeling those symptoms. So the cramps hit me so hard, I had to walk. I think I hit about mile 17. And there was this lady with her kids out on her porch uh, cheering a lot of the runners on. And she, uh, in a joking manner, she screamed at me. She was like, "Uh, you know, you ran out of gas, baby. And something about that made me so frustrated. I wanted to throw her some goose and say, you go ahead and finish the race yourself. She may have meant well, but I was just frustrated at the time. But I gutted out those last eight miles and I finished the race and I swore, I swore I'd never run another marathon again. But of course, two months later, I caught runner's amnesia and I was back at it again, training for my next marathon like we all do. When you swear you're never going to do a race again. Uh, funny thing, uh, fun thing about that is the same thing, same cramping issue happened in my next marathon, and the same cramping issue happened in the marathon after that. Uh, what I found most curious is I almost rarely cramped during my training runs. And when I did, I recovered fairly easy. After I dealt with the cramping during my third marathon, I made a mission. I, I, I was going to conquer my cramping issues because it made my, my racing miserable. I was miserable doing my races just thinking about it. So I did some research. Um, some of the results were mixed. Some of the methods worked while others made the problem worse. So that's that's what I want to share with you guys today. But before um, before I get started, let me just say... I'm not a doctor or any sort of trained medical professional. These are the methods that um, that I use that um, I uh, that I chose for myself that I did for me and me alone. So make sure you guys do your research before you um, enact these methods in your training routine. So uh, first, I started with just looking up the simple definition of what a cramp is. You know, Mayo Clinic defines. A cramp is, and I quote, a sudden and involuntary contraction of one or more of your muscles. And they define the cause of muscle cramps as long periods of exercise or physical labor, particularly in hot weather, um, can lead to muscle cramps. Overuse of muscle of a muscle dehydration, muscle strain, or simply holding a position for a prolonged period can cause a muscle cramp. So just going off of that definition, the first thing I wanted to figure out was if I was properly hydrating my myself during my runs. And in order to do that, I needed to determine what my sweat rate was. And it was a method it's a method that I, I researched um, and what you do is before your runs, make sure you use the bathroom, strip down, weigh yourself um, on a pretty decent scale and do the same thing after your run. Strip down 
and uh, you know, weigh yourself. One thing you got to make sure you do is towel yourself off before you before you weigh yourself. So, and that's a way to um, you know determine how much water you're losing during your runs. And um, in order to get a good average, do it a few times you know throughout the week uh, because it's going to vary day to day depending on what the conditions are that you, you know, it could be a hotter day than others. You could eat more the, you know, day before. So to get a good average, do it you know, a few times over a couple of weeks. And that way you can uh, figure out how much water you're losing during your runs. I was able to narrow mine down to the ounces that I needed to carry on me um, to hydrate. I usually hydrate every two to three miles during long runs. If it's like five miles and under, I usually, you know, don't take much hydration with me at all. Cause it's a shorter run. So determine your sweat rate, determine how much, uh, uh, how much, um, water you need to take with you or, or Gatorade, um, or power aid you need to take with you doing your runs. That was one method that I used that, that helped, um, that helped me. Uh, the second method I made sure, you know, of course, with the exception of my first marathon, any race that I ran, uh, whether it be a 5K on up to a marathon, I trained for it. I made sure that I was prepared for it. I just didn't go out there and just just run it willy nilly like I did my first marathon. So I made sure from from there on out that I was ready for whatever races that I that I ran. And the next method, uh, the next thing that I I changed up, um, I used to do a lot of static stretching before my runs. I don't do that anymore. I, I find um, personally that static stretching caused me to uh, cramp a lot more. Um, I do uh, dynamic stretching before my runs and static stretching after. And for those that are not familiar with static stretch, static stretching is you know, like any sh- stretches that you do in, like, say, you're standing still, or lying still, um, that you're you're holding that pose for you know 30 to 45 seconds. Dynamic stretching is think butt kicks or high knees, anything like a controlled movement that basically gets your get your body warm, you get you warmed up. So I do those first um, now but prior to my runs. And then after my runs, I do my static stretching. There is some research out there that, that shows if you do too much static stretching, it does weaken your muscles. Uh, so that's one thing that I that I, I, I completely flipped. And that's that's helped me uh, tremendously. Last thing, as I mentioned in uh, with my first marathon, you can go out and get so hype doing a race day and pretty much go out there and burn yourself out. Me, I, I go through my whole motions when it when whatever type of race that I'm doing, I usually listen to some music, you know, bef- before the race. Um, in particular, like if they're the larger races and stuff and the music is provided and the crowd is the, the race crowd is kind of vibing together, it can pump you up. But if you don't control yourself, you're going to go out there and and basically burn yourself out and have a miserable day. So I try I try my best to keep my most my emotions under control when it comes down to it. Um, if you're a person who cramps a lot, it could be a number of reasons why. Uh, the key to it all, I believe, is just process of elimination. That's the key, figuring out why you're cramping and trying to find a solution for that problem. And, you know, you find a solution for that problem. You can have better, you know, better races, better training runs. And um, you don't end up like me. Um, you know, let me tell you this quick story. Uh, I can remember one of my races, I was cramping so bad. Uh, this guy came up behind me. I, I guess you could see the salt trails on my face and it's like, you're all right, buddy. He's like, no, I'm struggling. So this guy reaches into his shorts, his running shorts, right? Pull out a bag with some white pills, gave me, gave me one of the pills. I popped it in my mouth. No questions asked. He ran off and, you know, I, again, the pill didn't do me any good. I still was cramping, but the moral or the key to that story is I didn't know what the pill was. I'm pretty. I'm assuming it was like a salt tablet. I didn't know what what the pill was. It was just white, and it came out of a guy's shorts. I just wanted the pain to go away. That's how bad I felt. I wanted the pain to go away. I took what this random stranger's pill to to get the cramps to go away. That's how bad it was. So, um, and that was my third marathon, no less. So that shows, you know, 
cramping cramping is no joke <laughs> cramping is no joke and i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know about that so so these are the methods again guys that that worked for me that that needed some tweaking so i love to hear from uh, you to see what things you do to prevent cramping during your runs uh, you can tweet at me at uh, man underscore RVA, and that's um, RVA Running Man on Twitter. Um, again, it's at man underscore RVA. Again, I love to hear, see what some of the things uh, you guys may do differently to help prevent cramping. But that's my show for the day. I look forward to uh, speaking to you guys next week. Um, and as always, be safe while you're out on the trails or roads. Um, until next week, peace.